here. Um, our text is uh, on the front cover of your worship folder. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We are at the sixth of our Beatitude windows on that side of the church, and the uh, service folder for this morning has a rather good picture of that window with the three uh, lilies and the phrase, blessed are the poor, the pure in heart. Well, why lilies? And what has that got to do with being poor in heart? Indeed, much as we peel back this uh, symbolic flower that is so connected with Easter. In fact, we often just simply say Easter lilies, no. The lilies uh, were picked as a symbol of Easter because about the time of Easter in the spring, they are blooming. And of course, they are beautiful and white and pure. Blessed are the pure in heart. There's the connection, the white and the purity. Well, there are other connections with the resurrection. A ball planted, not very attractive, not very nice looking. And yet it comes forth as a marvelous, wonderful flower. The purity of the Virgin Mary, as she is picked to be the mother of the Savior. And here's the connection also with Christmas, and now Easter, pure, the pure in heart, and so the Lord's purity transferred to us by holy baptism, as we are made one in Him, and purified by Him, and cleansed of our sins. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Really? Really? They shall see God? When did you last see God? Can't remember, okay? Well, maybe you're not pure in heart. That's one answer. But maybe there's something else going on here. You can't see God, can you? Really? An overstatement? After all, the scripture does say, God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't see God. Why do you really can't see God? But maybe there's another scriptural answer. That one, born of the Virgin Mary, that connection with the pure white that we saw in the lilies, that one is God. He is God and man, to be sure. But he is God, and we confess him to be God. God of God, light of light, very God of very God. Begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. Here in the person of Jesus Christ is God. And he was visible. His apostles saw him. He went through the countryside preaching and teaching. And even after the resurrection, they could touch him. And he ate with them. The Lord Jesus Christ, God and man. And to see Christ was to see God. But on Thursday past, we celebrated the event of the Lord's ascension to heaven. The disciples and apostles gathered at the Mount of Ascension. As Jesus rose from them, they stood longingly looking to heaven. Where he gone? Why was he gone? And the angels appeared to them and said, Don't waste your time standing here looking up. Go back to Jerusalem and do what he told you. For this same Jesus that you saw rise, ascend, will come again in all his glory to be the judge, and he will be come again. So, now we're back to the same problem. You can't see God, because Jesus is a sin. He's God. And we can't see him face to face, as his apostles, his disciples, his followers saw him. 
or can be, or can be. For before he ascended to heaven, on that night of his betrayal, he gathered with his followers, with his apostolic band, and he set aside bread, wine, and he consecrated and said over that bread and wine, this is my body, this is my blood, for the forgiveness of your sins. This is not metaphorical language. This is not symbolic language. He didn't say, well, this will remind you of, you can think about the dear departed Jesus of Nazareth when you gather in this meal. He said, this is my body. This is my blood. Real, visible, tangible. And that Lord who instituted this holy sacrament, that real, visible, tangible blood and body of Christ, he invites us to come each week and gather about his holy altar and receive the very gift that he offered, his body, his blood, for the forgiveness of our sins. Something that is real, tangible, that you can see, touch and taste. Can you see God? Yeah, of course you can. And every week it happens as you gather in the sacred place. Every week you can see the Lord coming to you. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. They will see God. And we, the pure in heart, we who have been baptized in his name, we who have been set aside in his people, we gather here week in, we go. The pure in heart who see that one who lived for us, that one who uh, offered his life for us, that one who had died for us, that one who rose for us, that one who ascended, is the same one here present in our midst this morning. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. I invite you this morning, I invite you, the pure in heart, for so you are by the holy baptism, I invite you to see God this morning. I invite you to receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of your sin. To know that God is here present, working, doing his will, in our own lives and we who see God now in this wonderful form of the Holy Sacrament will one day see Him face to face in the joy and bliss of eternal life. Blessed are the pure in spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. Blessed are we for we shall see God even as He knows us even as we are made his own children. God grant our sight be open. God grant that we see this morning that he is here present among us. Amen. The peace of God passes all who sin. Keep your hearts and your minds in true faith and delight eternal. We stand for the apostles. Amen.